So we've gone through the whole first part of this program. Now we want to use arrays. So we're going to make a couple of modifications in our two procedures, and then we're going to make some changes in my first method so that we can pick a different cow from the array to do, make the changes. So the first thing we need to do is create two parameters for each of these procedures. We need one to make the array, and then we also need one for which cow we're actually going to select. So let's create the parameters. The first one is an array, and the array is, is for the cow, so we're going to use our quadruped. And we need to give it some kind of plural, right? We're going to, because it is an array, so we can call it um, cows. Okay. We'll click right there. And then my second one is just which cow in this array. So I'm actually going to call it which cow. And it's going to be a number because it's going to use the index. Remember, an index is a number. So let's select whole number for this one. And it is not an array. Now we're going to do the same thing over here for random sings. Let's come over here. Let's create an array of quadruped. And we're going to call it cows again. And we need one for which cow. And remember that it's a whole number. So I've got these two parameters. Now I want to use them in the code. I'm just going to be down here at the bottom. Where I've got this, I want to change it to one uh, cow from my array. I'm going to come down here and you see cows. There's my, my array, and I see which cow, there's my index. I just make this change right here. I only need to do it one place in the saying. I'm going to come here to random color. Once again, I go to the bottom where it says this. I'm going to change it to cows with which cow, and I just have to do it twice. Cows, which cow. So these parameters are going to are local for this procedure. I'm going to get the values in my first method. So we don't have to worry about which cow right now. That's going to be given to the procedure, and everything will work fine. So we're going to come over here to my first method. First of all, you notice that there's some red things going on, and that's okay. We're going to come back to them in just a minute. Let's add up a comment for my variable section and a comment for my programming section. We're going to need a variable here for random number just like we did here, I used uh, like a pick color, and it was a random number for um, picking a, a color and a saying. We're going to do the same thing for picking a cow. So let's make our comment for variables section, and a comment for our programming section. For my variable, I need one variable. Remember, it's going to be a whole number because it's going to get a random number. So I select whole number, and I'm going to call it pick cow. So it's going to be similar to all the ones I had pick color, pick saying. Here I'm going to have pick cow. I can pick anything for the initial value. It doesn't matter. It's going to get a random number. So I say OK. So that's my variable. Now in my programming section, I want to get a random cow every time before I do the color and the saying. So I'm going to use the assign tile, and I'm going to drag it right inside the loop, but outside the do together. And my pick cow, I just pick any number as my placeholder. This time when I do a random number, I'm going to do it a little bit differently, because this is going to be an index. And you want to think back to remember when you did an array, the index is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So when I have 4 cows, the possibilities are 0 through 3. If I pick a number that's not one of those, I'm going to get an error and my program will stop. So you have to be really careful when you're picking a random number for your array that you're using the correct indexes. So I'm going to come here to random number, and this time I'm going to use the first one because it starts with zero and it excludes the top number. So if I say I have four cows, I can use the number four, but it won't pick it. It'll just go up to four. So this will give me a 0, 1, 2, or 3, which is perfect when I have 4 cows. Now I can use this pick cow as which cow right here. 
I'm going to go ahead and take this and notice that it lets me drop it in right there. So this is going to tell the array, it's going to tell the procedure which cow in the array to change the color and which same. Now for here, I'm actually going to create the array. We did this before in our event. We're going to do it right here. So I'm going to do my custom array. This pops up. And remember, you're just going to add each cow. So now I've got my custom array, and I've got which cow. I'm going to do the same thing right here. I have to do my custom array and just add each cow. Now, if we've got everything correctly, instead of just the tiny cow being changing colors and saying something, all the cows will have an opportunity of being randomly selected. Let's give it a try. It happened to like the number 2 a lot, didn't it? 0, 1, 2, 3, but it did pick this cow. Let's restart it and try it again. Okay, everything's working really good. Now the next thing is going to be something kind of new. We're going to use a counter. So I've got one started right here, and this is just an object that's going to show or display the count, but it's not really the counter variable. So we're going to need to create one, and we want to make sure that we kind of keep it separate from this object. So we've got two things going on. We've got the object, and we're going to have the variable. The object's going to display the value of the variable. So here in my first method, I'm going to use another variable to count the cows. Let's use our variable tile. I'm going to drag it up. And when we count, we always use whole numbers. So we're going to start right there. And the first number is always going to be 0 when it comes to a counter because we don't have any yet. We always start with 0 and then we're going to add 1 to it. And we're going to call this count cows. It will help us keep it straight separate from the object. Okay. And it does matter what I use as the initial value this time. When I'm using a counter, you should always start at zero. Now this object is called is um, called counter. So I have an object called counter and I have a variable called count cows. Just kind of keep that separate. They're going on like that. Now I have to just pick something to count. So I could count how many times yellow happens. I could count how many sayings. What we're going to count is how many times the tiny cow changes colors. That's what I'm going to look for. In order to do that, I need an if statement. So I'm going to drag up an if statement, and I'm going to put it, you can really kind of put it anywhere, but I'm going to put it just before the do together. So after I pick a random number, I want to check to see if that random number is the tiny cow. Well, what number is that? Look at our indexes. So this cow is 0, this cow is 1, this cow is 2. So whenever this random number is 2, I have selected the tiny cow, and I want to increment my counter. Increment means add one. So my for my condition here, I want to check to see if pick cow, the random number, is two. So let's go ahead and make that condition. Remember it's a whole number. I'm going to use equals equals. Here's my pick cow, and I want to compare it to two. If it is two, it's the tiny cow. Now to increment my counter, it is going to be an assigned statement, and this is going to be something different than we haven't done before. I'm going to take my count cows, and I'm going to assign it count cows. Okay, well that's kind of the same number, so zero goes to zero, but I want to do math. I'm going to start with count cows. I'm going to click on this little triangle, and I'm going to come down here to math. We did this with our functions. And you see here's count cows plus. Whenever I'm adding or incrementing, I'm doing it by 1. So it's going to take the original number, 0, and add 1 to it. The next time it's going to take the original number, 1, and add 1 to it. So every time it increments, it's just adding 1 to the, the value that's already there. And it's called increment. In fact, I'm even going to drag up a comment 
that says increment the counter. That's a fundamental programming principle right there is to do being able to increment. And it pretty much looks like that. Now I'm incrementing the counter, the actual variable, but the variables don't show on the screen. This object can display the value of the counter, but I have to let the computer know to do that. So there's one more step we have to do. So just incrementing the counter isn't good enough. I actually have to display it using the text property of this object. I've got the object selected right here, and let's take a look at its choices. And you can see that one of them is set value. I want to set the value of this counter to display the value of the variable. So I'm going to take set value. I'm going to put it right in here where I'm incrementing. And I'm going to use a custom string. I want the word um, tiny cow. And I'm going to use it kind of like a, a counter. So I have colon and then a space. That's going to be the first part. It's going to say tiny cow. And how many tiny cows do we have? So I need to add more to this. So I have tiny cow plus, and I want it to be, I need another um, S thing. I need to take the value of the counter, which is a number, and change it to a string. So I don't see tiny cow here. I'm going to come here to whole number, and I'm just going to do count cows. So you see it's got the tiny cow one time. Now I might want to increment my, I mean, change my counter uh, because only getting one cow wasn't that interesting. But just remember, here I changed the value of the count and here I displayed it. So it's going to always be tiny cow and the new value of count cows. If I don't put this set in here, it's going to stay the same. It's going to look the same even though the counter is changing. So I have to change the value of the object as well as change the value of the variable. So let's make this go 10 times and see if it can be a little more interesting. So there's one. Alright, still only went one time. Let's try it again. And it did two times. All right, our program is working really well. Before you go any further, just kind of check over everything. Make sure yours is working really well. I understand what's going on here now that we have a random number for the cow. We've incremented our counter. We've changed the value of the object. Everything's working really good.